So, uh, I always like to start off by uh, giving you some opening remarks, and I think I've said it before, but um, I spend about an hour or two a day working on the chip guide, and it could be new function that I'm adding, or working on submissions, or talking to the administrators and training them, or talking to the other board members and things like that. But it's not really work, it's fun for me. Because it gets, allows me to do three of the things that I like to do the most. That's working on the hobby, <coughs> chip collecting, it's working on websites, and it's photography. So I want to thank all of you for giving me this opportunity to do something meaningful with the things that I like to do so that it's not work, it's fun. Okay, Ted. So what are we going to do today? We're going to go through a little bit about the history of the chip guide. We're going to introduce our administrators who are here with us today. We're going to talk about what's new, what we've done in the last year. We're going to have some quizzes, so stay awake and maybe you can win something. And uh, we're going to have an announcement today. We're adding a significant new function, and you will be the first ones to see it. Okay. Oh, but before I start, um, Terry's not here. Terry's probably glued to his table right now, but on Saturday at 2 p.m., Terry Schaefer is going to be giving a presentation at the Ma Museum. Terry wrote a terrific book, Illegal Gambling Clubs of Toledo. It's getting a lot of note around the industry. The Ma Museum noticed that, and um, they asked him to speak. So I encourage everybody who's around on Saturday, head on up to the Ma Museum, and you'll be thoroughly entertained. So the history. Believe it or not, the chip guide started as a catalog. It was a catalog of the Riverboat casinos that Greg Susan started. And then he hired a web guy who made it into a website. And we're talking about sometime in the 1990s that that happened. And as you know, Greg passed away in 2009. And his wife, Carol, donated the contents of the website to the Museum of Gaming History. First thing that I did was I converted the website from what's called a static website to a dynamic website. But what that means is a static website is like a book. Everything is printed and done and can't be easily changed. And a dynamic website is we have a database, all the information is a database, and when you want to see, let's say, the casino chips from the Flamingo, I have a form, and I pull the database, query the database, and say, give me all the chips from the Flamingo. And it gives me the list, and I go one by one, and fill out the form for each one, and I build that page on demand. Every time you ask for it, we go to the database, we find what's there. So if tomorrow, you know, if overnight we add some more things to Flamingo, you'll see it the next day. So that's the dynamic portion of it. And it also lets do, us do things like have uh, casino search. Because it's a database, it has search capabilities. You could say I have a chip, it just says Flamingo on it. Show me all the casinos that have the name Flamingo someplace in the title. And we can do that. You can't do that with a static website. So all the enhancements we get is because we did this conversion way back when. After that, I wrote what's called the Chip Guide Update Facility. And we got a staff of about 15 administrators. And those administrators take your submissions and add them to the Chip Guide using the update facility. After that, we went from chips to pretty much any kind of collectible. So there's all every kind of collectible you can imagine on the chip guide. And then we expanded it from the US to the world. And that's where we are today. 
and we just make little enhancements uh, all the time. Next slide. So here's the first quiz. Which states in the United States do not have any legal casinos of any kind? Utah and Tennessee. Hawaii. Utah, Tennessee, and Hawaii. I forgot to get the prizes. But I'll let you know there are eight. And whoever contributes some of the answers. Hawaii. Who said Hawaii? And you said? Utah and Tennessee. Utah and Tennessee. Those are right. Who said Alaska? Vermont. All right, I think that's four. We got four more to go. Vermont. Who said Vermont? Oh, that's it. Vermont. What's Virginia? Maine. No. Alaska. Alaska? We said Alaska. What about Diamond Tooth Gurdies? That, that's Canada, Canada, Yukon Territory. I think we still have three more to go. Delaware. Delaware has casinos. Georgia. Georgia. Two more. North Carolina. No, but close. South Carolina. <laughs> South Carolina. There's one more. It's not a state. Utah. Said. One more. All right, I get to keep one. The last one is Virginia. Next slide. So you have Alaska, Georgia, Hawaii, South Carolina, Tennessee, Utah, Vermont, and Virginia. All right, next slide. New content. Believe it or not, we have 207,000 casino collectible items on the chip guide as of today. We've processed over 57,000 of your submissions. And that's using the submission form. We have some people who had huge collections who sent us 5,000 submissions, but they sent them directly to one of the uh, administrators. But using the submission form, we've gone through 57,000 submissions. At times when it's been very active, there have been 2,000 submissions waiting to be processed. Today, today, when I looked at the list, there's only one waiting to be processed. So we're keeping up to date. And what's been happening, besides processing your submissions, we've been trying to improve the data. And a lot of the uh, administrators have been going through and fixing up the data to make sure the molds are correct, the colors are correct, and all that stuff. So <coughs> and we're going to work hard to, to make that uh, even better because it will make the search capabilities better. If we describe the items correctly, then you can find them when you're trying to look for them. Okay. So what's new as far as function? The first thing is, when you go to the contributors list, you will see the top 20 contributors, and that's generated dynamically. When, it, when we ask to see the list, it looks through it, and it totals it up, and it comes out with that list. And what I wanted to focus on today is, look at number 20. Look at, yeah. That's David Sarles. David's here in the audience today. I want to thank David because David's a past president of the club. He's got a very high-end collection with chips that a lot of people have never seen before. And David has taken the time to go through his collection one by one, checking out what's on the chip guide and what's not, and submitting those items to fill in where we're missing. So we really appreciate somebody taking the time. All right, next slide. What else is new? Well, those who get the, uh, the email every day showing what's new on the chip guide, um, we have some complaints. It says, this item was here, but something was changed on it. I want to know what was changed. So I wrote some function that looks at the before image and the after image 
does a comparison and figures out what's changed. And if you look at the red boxes over there, you now will know exactly what changed um, on that item. Okay, so that's to help you understand what's going on. Next. The chip guide uses policy. This explains how we encourage people to use stuff that's on the chip guide. Um, we don't want it to be used for commercial purposes. We don't want people to come and take portions of the chip guide and use it for their money-making efforts. So we put together some rules that explain what's allowed and if you want to use our stuff, how to use it. And for the most part, everybody complies with that. But once or twice a year, we find somebody who doesn't. This year we found our biggest violator. We found a collector, someone who's never been a member of the club, who built the website not using some images, not using hundreds of images, but using thousands of images off of the chip guide. And in those situations, I send them an email, explain that you're not in compliance with our uses policy, and would you please get in compliance? No response after 24 hours, and then we notify their web provider that you've got a website with um, illegally using copyrighted material, filled out a form, and by the next day, that website was no longer on the internet. So why do we do this? Because we're protecting your assets. If we didn't protect them, then anybody could do whatever they wanted with all the content that's on the chip guide. So we're protecting them so that we could continue to, somebody could, if we didn't protect it, somebody could take it over and copyright it and say it's theirs, not ours, and then we wouldn't be able to use it anymore. So that's why we protect it. Okay. I wanted to focus on the administrators. Um, rather than the <coughs> list, next slide. There's a picture of some of them who were here at the convention last year. And if you're an administrator and you're sitting in the audience, I'd like you to stand and be recognized. And I'd like to thank you for all of your efforts. <laughs> Next. So the second quiz. This is the 500 Club. Does anybody know where it's from? It was? Atlantic City. Atlantic City. So the quiz is which five states have the most illegal casinos that are on the chip guide? Illinois. Kentucky. Illinois. Colorado. Kentucky. California. Colorado. Ohio. Who said Ohio? Louisiana. Oh, about New York? New York is another one. You know, there are a lot of, we may not have them all in ship time, but Florida does have a lot, Kentucky does have a lot, we just have a lot. Our wonderful submitters to submit that. Arkansas? Arkansas also has a lot of its own. Louisiana? Colorado? Texas? 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 Oh, who said Texas? I think we missed one, and the one we missed was Indiana. So that, that's the list of the bottom over there. Oh, wow. <laughs> In my home state. All right, next slide. So it's time for our major announcement. And the announcement is called My Collection and Want List. Now, the whole to do is that little small green box next to the chip guide number. It's circled, it, or it's, it's in green, and you've got two buttons there. One is MC in green, and one is WL, and it's in red. Those stand for my collection and want list. And if it's green, it means it's in the list, and if it's red, it means it's not in the list. And if you press a green button, it turns red, 
If you press a red button, it turns green. So what this means is you can now track your collection or your want list on the chip guide. And since the chip guide is on the internet, it's available any place that you have a smartphone. So if you come to the convention, I know a lot of you prepare for it by printing out lists of everything that you have. You don't have to do that anymore. All you need to do is carry a smartphone, and if you see something, pull it up on the chip guide and see whether it's in your collection or not. You happen to go to an antique mall like I do when I see one that I'm going around. A lot of times they have postcards which I collect. And I go, do I have this postcard or not? All I have to do is pull up my smartphone. Because I bought the same postcard five times probably. <laughs> <laughs> and now I just have to go onto the chip guide and it'll tell me whether it's in my collection or not. So um, we also. This is not the only thing that we're doing with it, but the next thing that we're doing with it, next slide, is we're adding this function onto the Chip Guide Query Facility. The Chip Guide Query Facility allows you to search for stuff on the Chip Guide. You can now search for stuff in your collection or on your want list. So we put another drop down over there that says catalog, right over here in green. The catalog of chip guide means you have the whole chip guide. If you select my collection, it's just the stuff in your collection. So if you want to know all the red dollar chips that you have in your collection, you can see them. And then the same thing with want list. So you can see your collection and your want list. How does it work? The first thing is you have to be logged on. So we know who you are, who you are. And it allows us to keep it private between you and the chip guide. So nobody else will know what's in your collection or on your want list. But when we started letting the word out that we were doing this, a lot of collectors said, maybe I want other people to see my want list so that we could do it a range of trade. So that'll probably be something that we'll be adding uh, later on. But it will be you saying, I want somebody else have access to my want list. Okay. So it's private. Nobody else can see the data. And this is our first step in doing this. So if we get everybody to do it, one of the things I'm thinking of is we could generate population reports. We won't say wh whose collection it is, but we could say we know this chip is in 30 chippers' collections. Okay. So um, I just don't want to explain it. I kind of want to show you how it works. So I think I'm going to take over for Ted. And thank you, Ted. Sure. And give you a live demo. So now we're going to uh, a version of the chip guide. This is not the live chip guide, but this is the chip guide downloaded to this PC. I didn't want to rely on internet connections. Right. Mm -hmm. So they can sometimes be hinky, you know? And hinky is a technical term that we use in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> when the throughput exceeds the error rate, then the quality sucks. <laughs> so, uh, so let's see it in action. So here's Nevada, and we were looking at the SAMs before. So let me bring up the SAMs. In Vegas. And here's that chip, and you see that it's in my collection. And if I press the WL button, it's now both in my collection and my want list. Why would you want to have it? on both of those lists. If you're going to have it in your collection, why would you want it to also be on your want list? Upgrade. Is that a condition? A condition upgrade. So you can do that. I was at first thinking of just having one button and either have it collection or want list, but then I decided to do two buttons so you could handle that situation. So 
you could just, I got this in my collection, and I have this one in my collection, and just go through and add stuff to your collection. Now, all those are in your collection. And the other side of this is, uh, then seeing, um, you know, the chip by query facility. Is everybody familiar with the chip by query facility yeah. and how it works? No. No. So when you start out, you're looking at everything that's in the chip types. So this was done about three weeks ago, so it's about a thousand less of where we are today. Uh, that's why it's 206,000, not 207. But what you can do is filter out until you only see the stuff that you want to. What do you collect? You want to say it's one dollar maybe? So we could go to United States. And Nevada. How about Grand Open? Yeah. And the event would be Grand Opening. Where's Grand Opening? I know what happened. Somehow it dropped off the list. Yeah. All right, we'll put it back on. But let's say we were talking, what's another popular one? Chinese New Year? So if you wanted to see all the five dollar um, Chinese New Year chips from Nevada, there's the list. And it pretty much works that quickly. Yes, we only have 72 five dollar Yeah, at eight dollar ones. But there are probably a lot of eight dollar So if I take the denomination out and find all of them, then we have a four hundred five. There's a lot of those eight dollar chips. And it, if you want to know the ones that are you know, a certain color, they're probably not going to be any blue. Probably all be. Red. Then you get all the red ones. So it allows you to filter until you see the things that you want to see. But let's reset it. Go back to the whole thing. Now you can say my collection. And this is again, this is just my stuff. Now, the reason there are 2,339 is because I built a program that says if you're a contributor to the chip guide, you just tell us, and everything that you contribute to the chip guide, we'll put into your collection for you. So to make these, so that's about how many things that I added into the chip guide. I didn't go through one by one and clicking all of them. And you could, so if I, in my collection, like I said, if I want to see all the red dollar chips, my collection, there they are. You must have some that you didn't put in that are in your collection. Right? Yes, absolutely. But that was my start, mm -hmm. and I did that just to for to be able to demonstrate this. Now, if I wanted to do uh, then my want list. Here's a lot list of chips, things that I'm looking for. And this is really helpful when you're walking around the show floor. I'm looking for this chip. You could show it to a deal if you have that chip, mm -hmm. rather than just saying, you know, do you have a Royal Dutch chip, one dollar chip? They may not know it. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. I even know I've got one of those in this book up here. Now, today, I bought this chip, bought it from Tom Cloud. So if I click on uh, on the green uh, want list, it's going to drop off. So remember, this is between Calusa and the this Elam Indian chip. I want to click on it. 
Here's the collusion, and you and it's gone because it's no longer on my mind. Did it automatically add it to your collection or no? No. So, so you're right. I have to go back <laughs> and add it to my collection now. But you know, you see, one of the things is the administrators talk to each other all the time and we come up with ideas to do things. We're kind of out of ideas. So we're looking for ideas for you from you. And this idea, uh, if I take it out of my want list, maybe I should have a pop-up that says, add it to my collection. So this is how we improve the chip guide. We improve it to meet the needs of the collectors. Okay. Uh, is yep. that a brand new function? What? Just, just brand it's new. being debuted right now. You're yeah. the first ones to see it. It's not live on the chip guide yet, okay. but I've got to go back to my room and uh, run a couple of commands, and then it will be live for everybody. And that'll happen today. You'll have to log in. If you don't have a chip guide ID, they're free to anybody who's a member of the club. Okay, so you have to be a club. This is going to be only for club members. And this is one of the first things we're, we're doing and we'll be doing more that won't be available to the general public. So we want to encourage, if you're interested in this stuff, join the club. And these are the things that you'll get out of it. Yes? Uh, if you have some uh, duplicates that are available for you know, the GDs as traders, could you have a third function uh, that would be my trader list, basically? Sure. And again, you would want to share that with others. So what we would do is we'd have a drop-down field with all the people who are members and select it off and add this person, allow them to see my trade list. Now, if, if I, for example, have, have one chip for my collection, but I've got a second that's available for trading, so if it wouldn't be on the want list, it would be, how would you show that you have one for your I probably have to have a third button there. I have to be left on the trader button. Trader button. Yeah, okay. okay. So that program that will take all the stuff that's um, that you've contributed and then add it to your collection um, will also take a file. So if you have a list of of stuff in your collection and we just need either the chip guide number or a catalog number. So like a TCR number, you give us a file with that list, we can import it and see that for you. Okay? And uh, what we're gonna do is try and make a little money off of that. Uh, for every 100 items in the list, we're charging $1. Mm -hmm. So we think it's kind of worthwhile to do it that way than for you to find 100 items on the uh, chip guide and press the button a hundred times. That's a penny a piece. Excuse me? So that's a penny a piece? A penny a hundred each. items for a dollar? hundred items for a dollar. Yeah. Yes. Can't beat that. That's the value of the <laughs> Charles, did you have an ID? Is it pretty self-explanatory? You've seen it. This is it. There's nothing more to it than this. And it, you know, I mean, if you're going to be sharing it, then we will have to have another drop down on that chip guide um, query facility that says whose list do you want to see. Get um, a log on for the chip guy. 
site, there's a membership button over here. You put in your first name, last name, your email, a password, and your club member number. Then we will get that. We have a list of all the club members. We will review it, and then we'll send you an email that says you can now log on to the chip guy. That takes a day. Charles, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, on the main page here, where do you find the query, uh, the, the query option? Chip guy query facility right there. Sarah, me in the face. Thank you very much. Whoops. Oh, I'm not. Uh, well, wow, that's good, isn't it? No. <laughs> But the difference between error. that option yeah. and the one that says chip search. Okay, we'll show you what the difference is. Let me log back on. You gotta have a CG number or a TCR number for a chip search. Okay, Not so we have two, two search facilities, casino search and chip search. For casino search, I said Flamingo before. search and it gives you a list of every casino on the chip guide that has the word flamingo in it. It tells you the state, the city, and the molds of chips that are used in that casino. So if you have a haddock cane chip that says flamingo on it, this is one that you might want to check out. And from here, if you click on it, it brings up that page on the chip guide. So this wasn't it. You could go back. Why can I go back? Oh, because it's off the screen. You go back, look for another, because uh, here's another one that has the word flamingo in it, and see if it was this one. So it's an easy way to find you know, what casino is attached to a chip that you're holding in your hand. And for chip search, um, let's just say you know the chip guide number or you have a catalog number. So I always like to use the TCR number. You have a TCR number uh, on a chip. This is a quick way to get to it. I'll show you uh, the chip, and if you want to, that way you like to the casino that was from. So those are the search capabilities. Okay. And I told you how to get the membership. And let's go back to the presentation. So again, it's pretty much as easy as log on to the chip guide, find an item, and press the My Collection or One List buttons, and then uh, it will add those to the list. And if you want to, um, view them, go to the chip back period facility to view them. We want to do these things so they're as easy as possible to do so that even my wife can do them. <laughs> and that's the list import that I explained. And now I'm just here to answer any questions that you might have. How much time do we have, uh, Jim? 25 minutes. 20 uh, hours. Um, yeah. 25 minutes. Okay. So now I just want to answer any questions that you have about using the chip guide. I have one thing I prepared. I can show you how some of the things that we can do with image processing to fix images, if you're interested in seeing that. Yes? Charles, on the submission form, I run into problems because the item I'm submitting requires more explanation. Yet I don't want that information in the field that's going to show when the chip go, image goes up on the chip guy. There, there is a comment mm -hmm. area. I thought that was just to go on to the chip guy. No, that's your comments to us. Uh, okay, it's, sometimes that stuff can go on there, but we read that. But the admin will understand. It. Yes, I, 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 a comment that I typically get, we picked up this item in this casino on this stage, and we were told by the owner such and such right. and such about that. So we take out the beginning part. We just put, this is what the owner said. Okay. It, does, it doesn't go in there straight. Oh, we okay. copy and paste it and edit it. Yeah. What have we done to ensure the continuation of this? Let's say you go home and your wife sees the medallion and 
kills you because you think she <laughs> spent too much time to get there. What are we going to do? What do we do as an organization to see that the, 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 this thing is continued for as long as we So we have a backup uh, webmaster, which is Ross Popple. And, and he's he a pretty smart the, IT guy. And he knows all the passwords. And yes. There was also a suggestion, you know, this is becoming some valuable, maybe we we'll want to have a second copy of this on another web provider in case something happens here, we could switch over. When you get your login, you know, to be able to go in there, Yeah. does it ever time, like say you don't go in there for a whole year, will it expire or? When you log on, we will leave you logged on for a year. And I, I believe the way it's set, every time you come to the ship guide to do something, it will reset it to another year. So effectively, as long as you keep using the same uh, computer or phone or whatever, it'll li leave you locked on until you don't use it for a year. So let's say we have a postcard that was submitted, and that's what the image looks like. What are the problems with that image? Well, it's skewed. It's skewed. It's, it's wider at the bottom than it is at the top. Okay? What color is it? Good question. Excuse me? It's a very good question, Tom. What? White. It's white, but, it, but there's white around the edges over here. But it's actually gray in this photo. That happens a lot. And what's the third problem? It's small. You see above the word postcard? Yeah. Somebody put a price on it that they were going to sell it. I don't want that price to be on the chip guide. So we're going to see how we fix these problems. And we're going to fix them in stages. So. Here is this, and we're going to open it with Photoshop Elements. And this is going to help me fix the skewing, because it has a facility here called Correct Camera Distortion. So I need to tilt this. first tilt I'm going to do is the vertical tilt. And you see that it's about readable, that it's getting to be more rectangular and a trapezoid. And it's a little bit off also this way. And when I get the newest version of this, I can just clip the four corners and it'll fix it for me. But on the old version like this, I've got to do it manually. So that's as much as I'm going to do here. And what I'm going to do then is <coughs> Save this. Right in it. Right in it up. 
Now it kind of looks close to what it should be. So I said, okay. I want to crop it so it's square. see functions, suggestions for us. I, on uh, obsolete casinos, you don't have, you know, when it was closed. We generally do. I'll show you another secret. Let's go back to the query facility. So those states are there, and we try our best to put them in the 
pace. For a lot of them, we don't have close dates, especially if it's a legal casino. Now, unless it burned in a fire or the police came in and shut it down on a specific date, we won't have close dates. But, you know, when we, when we have the information, then we put it in. So we should have open and closed states. We also ask for help in the comment box. If you know something, insert colors that we can't tell because of the scan was bad, or please add that stuff into the comment box so we can actually physically see, read what you're telling us. Otherwise, we have a hard time. Uh, if you know the club closed in the 1950s, <coughs> tell us that. We can actually put down the 1950s and at least it's very close to a close date, as close as we can get. So let's say you want to do a screenshot of this, and you didn't want to use that many screenshots. You can actually say, I want to see eight across instead of six across, and then query, and change it up then. But again, this is something that you can't do on a static web page, because it's, it's done one way, and that's it. <laughs> if you wanted to see 200 items on a page instead of just 50, you can do that. That's another one. You want to see all the, a lot of chips that were issued in the last couple of years. I'll put everything, well, everything after 2016. So these were all, we have 111 chips that were issued in 2017 and 2018. Okay, Jerry's chip at Jerry's chip at I know this. I know some Jerry forgot those chip at the very top. There it is. Yeah. That's his Halloween chip. That's <laughs> <laughs> <was> pretty scary. <laughs>